Hi, my name's Owen Wynn with Rackspace Cloud U. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about the difference between DAS, SAN, and NAS, because it's been kind of an interesting evolution in storage that we've seen over the last few years. In the beginning, there was a server. And when we wanted to add additional disk space to that server, we had to unscrew the bolts and open the case and we had to physically install new drives into that machine. And that became a hassle for people that wanted to manage these machines at a very large scale. So the simple next step is to plug something directly into your server that's some type of storage media. And um, so in this case, you know, I'm gonna have what we call directly attached storage. Directly attached storage is storage that you physically connect to your box. It could be over something like a SCSI connection, small computer systems interface. It could be across something like USB or Firewire or any number of other technologies can be used to directly attach storage to your server. And we went with this for a number of years, but unfortunately this doesn't have the ability to scale. DAS, directly attached storage, um, becomes unmanageable and unwieldy if I had to have directly attached storage connected to thousands of servers. So they came up with a smarter way of dealing with things. What they did is they plugged in a special adapter onto the server and those adapters are called host bus adapters, HBAs. And then that host bus adapter connected you to a very special network that was dedicated for storage. So we called it a storage area network, a SAN. And on this SAN, we would attach some uh, really large and expensive type of storage solution that would allow multiple servers connected to the SAN to access a centralized solution for the storage. Now, what's really cool about this is we could spend a lot of money on this storage and we could make it a RAID solution, a redundant array of independent disks. And there's a number of flavors of, of RAID that are out on the market today, but you could build all your redundancy into one location. All of your management and maintenance would be in, in a single location. Whereas if I attach directly attached storage to thousands of different servers, then I have thousands of different management locations that I have to attend to. So SAN was really a a big step forward in giving us the ability to centralize the, uh, the administrative burden of, of managing additional storage while still giving us the flexibility of dynamically attaching or what we would call mapping a LUN, a logical unit. Um, you, would, you would have the ability to attach this, this solution to anything that was connected to your storage area network. So really flexible, um, highly available because of your underlying RAID architecture. But this was very expensive because you had to build out the storage area network. And typically this, this big block of RAID hardware required special administration or special hardware to function. And so this has continued to evolve. And what folks have done is they've taken a look at the fact that they already have a highly available network network that they've been using for data, for voice, for internet access for a number of years. And so what they've decided to do is to converge the storage area network into an existing LAN. And within that existing LAN space, what we've decided to do is to still attach a large, highly available RAID solution, redundant array of independent disks, but this is made available via our, our network, our existing LAN network. So this is what we refer to when we describe network attached storage. Now, there's a special consideration that you need to have here. You still have the flexibility of attaching to a number of different servers that all might be connected to the same local area network, but your NAS traffic, specifically traffic that we're using for our storage solution, has to compete with existing LAN traffic. And so prioritizing traffic to allow for that network attached storage then becomes a very major concern. And so if you do go with a NAS solution, you wanna make sure that your underlying quality of service infrastructure is appropriately configured to give priority to your storage traffic over regular LAN traffic that might be internet browsing or something like that. 
So that describes the, the subtleties, or at least some of the differences, between DAS, SAN, and NAS. Um, another thing you might wanna, want to consider while you're looking at these solutions are the fact that um, you, you use slightly different protocols. Typically in a SAN, the, the best performance you're gonna see is gonna come from fiber channel. And when you come over to NAS, you're gonna be crossing IP. So you have another protocol there. For example, fiber channel over IP. Um, the same is true of SCSI. There is iSCSI, which is a SCSI transport that allows you to cross over IP. So a few protocol considerations, some physical network considerations need to be addressed, uh, but all of this is to give us ease of management and ease of use within our, our storage deployments. And so more and more we see a lot of technologies gravitating towards NAS, and even some companies will use NAS as an underlying cloud uh, technology to, to support their, their various cloud activities as well. Thanks for watching. My name's Owen Wynn with Cloud University. See you around campus.